My whole life, my grandpa, um, he's lived in a motorhome, traveled around the states and sold jerky in a shack really similar to this one. So my whole life I've grown up, I've seen him, I've been able to visit him in lots of different places. He's been up in Alaska for about the, ten, about the last 10 years. My grandpa had an old shack. It was actually stored at my house. I repainted it, fixed it up, and bought me the motorhome and took off. Um, drove up here and couldn't be happier and was really happy to kind of experience that life that I've always seen my grandpa of just traveling. That's something I've always loved, um, exploring new places and especially being outdoors and, and that's exactly what Alaska is. I'm Dallin Langford. I'm from southern Utah up here in Alaska for the summer, just selling jerky and traveling around the state. I'm loving it. So I've, I'm here in my motorhome, my Fleetwood Tioga. It's been great to me. It's a V10 engine, which I haul around the jerky shack, so I kind of need a little something more. V8s are great um, if you're not hauling a lot. We did, we made it halfway through Canada from Utah and actually had to get new tires put on. They wore out on us, so anybody thinking about coming up to Alaska, I would suggest great tires. I haven't done a lot of modifications to the motorhome itself. There is a solar panel up top which charges my batteries, and I actually have two batteries which are really important if you are going to be like out here on the road for long periods of time it definitely helps to have the extra battery so that you know i don't end up dead out here in the middle of nowhere and i usually just come up and fish and uh it was a couple years ago about three four years ago i was up with grandpa and he said hey sit and watch my stand for a while i gotta go to town right and so he set me there and i was actually there with my older brother and we sat and we had no idea really what we were doing. All we knew is the prices on the jerky and that we had to sit there. And it was super easy. People came to us, told us what they wanted. We just took their money. And I thought, hey, this is super easy. And so I've been in college, kind of bounced back and forth between home, college and stuff. And this summer I, you know, I thought, I, I can do this, I've done it before. So I pitched the idea to my grandpa and he said, you know, why not? I know you can do it let's get you into it and so I kind of set it up to to where I could come up and follow in the steps so let's go look inside so up here is where I where I sleep um, have to climb up every night with the ladder very comfortable no complaints there driver's seat passenger seat this is the couch I like to lounge around here on the couch of course we've got where we eat on the table here perfect perfect space especially for me me and the dog, no complaints there. Uh, definitely room for, for more people. Plenty of storage space as far as clothes go. All my other stuff, I have a lot of tools and stuff that I, that I use regularly. Definitely enough storage space. I don't even use half the closet. I would say the biggest like benefit and also challenge sometimes of, of living in the motorhome, more benefit than challenge is just having everything as far as like home with me at all times. You know, I never have to go far for for what I need or what I have. Probably the most challenging was, was downsizing um, from you know my house, having everything that I was used to, the stuff in my truck that I'm used to always having in my truck, opposed to the house and combining it all together. But actually I found it these last couple of weeks living in the motorhome, I found it a lot easier. And I'm, I, you know, I don't have as much stuff but I have exactly what I need and it's less complicated, really easy. So personally for me, it hasn't really been a challenge. I've, I've really loved this different kind of lifestyle than, I, than what I'm used to. Then the kitchen's in the rear. Um, I really like having the kitchen in the rear. It just kind of separates it. I've seen, for example, my grandpa's motorhome has the kitchen more up front. I kind of like having it just kind of in the back. So here we have the kitchen, oven, microwave, um, stove here, sink, everything's fully functional, really great. Plenty of storage space for my food, dishes, all of that. Um, and then this here is the bathroom. <laughs> kind of small, it's pretty standard motorhome bathroom. Shower, toilet, sink, plenty of shelf space. Definitely a good hot water heater, that's important up in Alaska, so you don't freeze. So as I've kind of experienced it and thought about, you know, um, as far as a, a lifestyle change and, and as far as the downsizing, I don't think it would be hard at all. And I've actually made comments to as far as like my parents and friends that, hey, I might just drive this to college and instead of renting an apartment again, I might just park it in the parking lot at the college and live in it because 
it's super easy. I have everything I need and it would be less expensive than, than renting out a house, driving back and forth and all that. No, I've definitely thought that this is kind of a one-time deal as far as I have planned out. Um, but I would very much like to continue this and have it be a, a constant thing where I, you know, I get to have these experiences and travel and, and, you know, as of right now, I wouldn't change it for anything. So a couple modifications that like I have done and were done to the motorhome are super important and super helpful for me. Being selling jerky off the side of the road, I, I accept credit cards, so I have a square account, which is really important that I have service. So I bought a, a cell phone booster and I installed it myself. Super easy to install, just ran a, a cord up in an antenna clear to the back. Really helps me get that service in places where I normally don't. And then as I was installing that cell phone booster, I didn't know this when I bought the motorhome, but the previous owner had actually installed a solar panel that's actually just right above us. And when I was installing it, I saw the panel and said, holy cow, I have a solar panel. And I asked a little more about it. And this is actually a, a monitor that when this light turns on, when the, when the sun's shining um, pretty good, it actually charges my batteries. It really helps me to always stay charged. I rarely have to go plug in. Um, which is a super nice luxury that I'm not always worrying about power. Um, so if, if you are considering being on the road quite a bit and, and boondocking, not going to RV camps, I would strongly suggest. Um, I talked to the guy who installed it, not super hard to install the solar panel. Um, definitely a way to go. And I've looked into getting more actually and, and kind of furthering that because it's super useful and easy. And also down here, I have an inverter um, that was put in not super expensive, but really useful. All I have to do is turn on. I don't have to start the generator, make sure it's plugged in, everything. I can just start the, the motorhome itself, and then I can use anything right there from the inverter. So super useful thing to have while I'm on the road or if I am just need a quick little something. I don't have to start the generator, wait for everything to, to boot up. So really helpful to have and makes makes the stay a little little easier. It came with two batteries. Um, I had one battery that was actually dead that was sucking the life out of the other one. So there for about a week, I kept going out and everything in my fridge would go bad because my batteries would die. And so I actually went, got two new batteries and replaced them. And since then I've had zero problems and the charges kept up with the solar panel. I absolutely would suggest it for anybody, um, especially those people that are on the fence like, I've kind of been on the fence. I love to travel, explore, and I'm so glad I took the step to do it. So I definitely would push anybody over the fence so that they could take that step because it's been a great experience and really it's super easy to get used to. I mean, it's super comfortable, easy, and, and awesome. Going to school, you know, that takes up a lot of, a lot of time and money and uh, mostly thinking about the funds and you know, how, how am I gonna get a motor home? But really when you look into it, it's not that bad. Definitely pays for itself in the end. So I think that's part of the reason. And it's it's kind of kind of a big leap. There's kind of a little, I was kind of unsure what would happen if it goes wrong. I mean, what happens if I get to Alaska? I don't know where to park. I don't know what to do. How do I make friends if I need to plug in? Or where do I find an RV dump? There's so many ifs that, that I was asking. and and I was just worried about them too much. And so I think that stopped me from taking the step. But really once I got up here, everything falls into place. It's super easy to find people. People are kind, people are out there and they're willing to help. All you gotta do is ask. So I've had no problem finding people, people that are willing to just go out of their way to help me. Being up here all alone, I've never felt like I'm alone. There's always people on the road that, that are kind and I can talk to. So all those worries were instantly dissolved.